Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, Welcome to Freedom, Freedom Fellowship. Fellowship. It, 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 it is a Sunday of uh, the last month of the year, and we thank God for bringing us to this point. We thank him for his grace, his mercy that has kept us in this year of 2023. So as we begin this month, we rejoice that we can celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we come together as the body of Christ to do that. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that on this first Sunday of Advent, Lord, we can thank you that we have a reason to have anticipation, expectancy, because, because we, know we know that, that just as Jesus came over 2,000 years ago, he's coming back. And we pray that our praise and our worship and everything that we are will be speak of that awaiting for his uh, return, the hope of our salvation. Father, we pray that as we go into this service, Lord, that you will help us to release whatever burdens that we're carrying, Lord, so that we may be blessed to just know who you are and know what you can do in our lives for every situation. And as we go into your word, Lord, let it speak to us in a way that it will encourage our hearts to go further in our faith. For Lord, we need that faith that believes that all things are possible if we just believe in your ability to do what you were able to do. And then God, when we leave this place, we know we're not leaving your presence, so be with us as we go into a new week, a week of things that we know about and things that we don't know about. We trust that regardless if we know or don't know, Lord, you have everything handled. And so we pray that you lead and guide us in Jesus' name, amen. Now let's get into the worship service for today. Good morning, freedom. Good morning. Let's stand to our feet as we prepare our hearts and our minds for the Lord's presence. Amen. How many of us are glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning, even though the weather wasn't on our side? Amen. But God is always on our side. Amen. So we are here to give Him the glory and the honor. We say, prepare.
to his name. Yes. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory Thank to his Lord. name. Glory yes. to the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Our scripture today comes from Revelation 19, fifth chapter, and it reads, And a voice came from the throne, saying, Give praise to our God, all you his bound servants, you who fear him, the small and the great. Amen, amen. How many of us came to praise the Lord this morning? How many of us truly came to praise the Lord? We see the children even have their hands up, amen. He is great, amen. He is magnificent, amen. And so we give him the glory and the honor this morning.
God, when we think about how you have protected us, Lord, from danger seen and unseen, God. Lord, you hid us in your bosom, God. You hid us from the enemy, oh God. Lord, we come to give you praise today. We come to lift your name up, God. We come to give you all the glory, God. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough, God. Because, Lord, you've been so good to us, God. Better than we've been to ourselves, God. And we don't deserve it, Lord. We thank you today, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We lift you up. We magnify your name today, Jesus. Because nobody is like you, Lord. No one loves us like you do, Lord. You sacrificed your life for me, Lord. And, Lord, I come to give you praise today. I don't know about anybody else, God, but I love you today, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Lord, we come, oh God. Father, confessing we haven't always done it right, God. We haven't loved each other as you have commanded, God. We haven't forgiven each other as you have forgiven us over and over and over again, God. But Lord, clean these ragged hearts of ours out, God. Let us start fresh today, God. Let us do better. Let us try better. Let us be intentional about doing what you ask us to do, oh God. Lord God, we come praying that the word will go forth today, God that somebody somewhere will know about a man named Jesus and what he has done, what he's able to do, and what you said, God, you're going to do for us, God. Because, Lord, we know that our future rests in your hands, God. We don't have to worry about the problems of the world, God, because we know you're going to fix it in your own time, Jesus. Lord, we pray for our pastor that is coming forth to deliver the word, God, that, Lord, someone will hear it today. Someone will be moved today, God. Someone else will claim you today, Jesus. We pray for those that are joining us virtually, God. All of those that may be struggling right now with illness and grief and all of the troubles of the world, God. Please give them peace today, God. And Lord God, we pray all these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. And give thanks, oh God. Amen. Welcome to Freedom Fellowship Church. Our mission at Freedom Fellowship Church is to free each individual to pursue a lifelong relationship with Jesus Christ by empowering them with the tools for effective Bible study, building Christ-centered relationships, and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. This week at Freedom, our morning message begins a new series entitled, The Light. Part one is on the subject, Perceiving the Light. Please submit your prayer request by emailing the church at myfreedomfellowshipchurch at gmail.com or visiting the church website at mylibertyffc.org. Our FFC vision for 2023 is moving forward. Join us as we move forward with our faith in God's favor in our fellowship, and with our freedom as we press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Weekly Bible study will resume. Please see Deacon Victor Hardrick for more information. Happy birthday to all of those celebrating a birthday during the month of December. There are three ways to give to our ministry. Visit our church website and follow the instructions. Download our church app. And finally, submit your contribution in person. turned it on, then turned it back off. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Good morning, Freedom. It is good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Truly, he is wonderful, and we praise God for 
just being the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Today we're going to start our new series for December called The Light, The Light. And part one is going to be called Perceiving the Light coming out of the Gospel of John chapter 1 verses 1 through 5. And the key verses are going to be verse 4 and verse 5. It says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we're able to gather once again. To gather under your presence, Lord, in your presence, we just thank you, Lord, that every day that we can experience your presence is a good day. And Father, I pray that as we go into your word, that your word would speak to us this morning. That even though it's a familiar word, Lord, help it to have a freshness in our hearts so that we, ne- we know that it is your name that is above all names, that it is you who is the light of the world. And God, I thank you, Lord, that even in, on this day, this day that seems kind of gloomy with the fog and the clouds and the rain, you're still shining, Lord. And so, God, we thank you, Lord, that we can have the warmth of your spirit to remind us that you still have us on fire to be a light that reflects the light. And so, God, I pray that your word would give us understanding, give us utterance. And as we go into this week, Lord, help us to encourage somebody with your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we start this month with a new series focusing on the light that came from heaven to earth. And truly, Jesus is that light that shines in our souls. Does anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? I thank God that he is that light that shines from the lighthouse to let us know that even though we live in a world of darkness, we still have that light that comes from Christ. But despite the world not receiving this light, he is the light of the world. And in our text today, it's going to convey that Jesus came to be that light into this world, even though the world could not comprehend him. And despite those things, we thank God that we have come to receive and believe in the light of Jesus. And, 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 And even though there are people in the world who fail to comprehend the significance of the light that is Christ, it is up to us to shine that light. Amen. So that those who need to see the light of Christ will see his light shining in us. And I don't know about you. He is that light that is our life. And we magnify that light in our lives when we trust in him, when we believe in him, and when we come to depend on him. And so today's message begins this series in which we remember why we appreciate this great light that is Jesus Christ. Does anybody in the room appreciate the light of Christ in your life? Amen. I'm in the right room. Amen. I know we've known down a few people today, but it's all right. Amen. Because we know that the light of Christ is shining in us even right now in the things that are going on in this world. And it is in him that we have this embodiment of light as the one who gave us life by giving his life and giving us his light. Can you thank God for the gift that keeps on giving? Amen. Not only did Jesus give us light, he also gave us his life. And I thank God for that. And he is the embodiment of life because of the first point. Christ is the foundation, the fellowship, and fulfillment of our enlightenment. Christ is the foundation, the fellowship, and fulfillment of our enlightenment. We know enlightenment is not just that philosophical term that's thrown out to say that you're smart and got intelligence. Enlightenment is when you have understanding. Enlightenment is when something has been illuminated to give you understanding. And when you have Jesus Christ... You have this ability to understand things that other people cannot understand. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's the by and by of having Christ. We'll understand it better by and by because the more we walk with Christ, the more we begin to understand why we have to carry this cross every now and then, why we have burdens to bear. But it's not the end. Amen. That 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 burden that we bear can we can take it to Jesus and he can lift every burden. Amen. That sorrow that we have, we can take it to Jesus and he can turn our sorrow into joy. And so it's this enlightenment that comes from the embodiment of the light that is Christ that gives us a foundation, a fellowship, and a fulfillment. And we see this in verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. You see, Jesus is the embodiment of light. He is the light that shines in our soul when we receive him as our Savior. How many of you know from that experience, amen, when you got saved, you began to see 
life differently, amen? You began to see things not from a warped, dark perspective, but a positive one of faith, believing and hoping that that which God has for you will come to fruition if you just hold on and hold out. But to understand how this is possible, we must remember that Jesus did not come just on the scene when the New Testament began. He existed prior to the accounts of his birth. He was there before the beginning and instrumental in our beginning as he played a role in the creation of this world through the spoken word we recall from the book of Genesis. We're going to go all the way back to the beginning, amen? And this enlightenment helps us to understand the embodiment of Christ from a perspective that when God spoke, let there be, everything that came thereafter, God saw as good. I'm going to park it there for just a second. I told this a long time ago, but sometimes we we need to see the word for what it is. When God speaks, he don't say it's going to be bad. Amen. He says, look, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, then, you know, stuff can come. But anytime the Lord is speaking on your behalf and my behalf, anytime his word is speaking to us, he's trying to put something into motion in our lives. He's trying to bring something into existence in our lives. He's trying to bring something into being in our lives that we will come to see just as he see that it is good. That's why the Bible says, for we know all things work together for good for those that are called according to his purpose. Anybody know what I'm talking about in the room? It may not look good to the world, but if God said it's so, amen, you better say it's going to be good because my God is able to make it all right. This is a reminder that when we let the word work in our lives, we are allowing God to speak into our lives that which is good for us. Has anybody ever let God's work speak into your life? Have you ever read the word and said, Lord, I'm applying this to me. Amen. I'm applying this to my situation. And, and, and I know somebody in the room know what I'm talking about. Anytime you apply God's word to you, it's like ointment. Hello, somebody. Anytime you apply God's word to a situation, it's like medication. Amen. It's a solution to fix something that is broken, to fix something that needs to be healed. But get let me tell you something. It ain't like the ointment and prescription that you get from the drugstore or the pharmacy because what God has for you, it lasts everlasting. Amen. If he promised to deliver you, you ain't delivered for a moment. He'll deliver you for always. Uh, it, come on. Somebody know what I'm talking about today. It is something about God that when we let God speak, he allows us to see what he sees, and that is that which is good. Now, what does this have to do with the embodiment of Christ being the light? Well, it is this enlightenment that is available to those who accept Christ as their foundation, fellowship, and fulfillment. The foundation is simply the fact that in the beginning was the word. Let me tell you all something. If God did not speak in Genesis 1, none of us would be here. If God did not say, let there be, and Christ and the Holy Spirit working in tandem with him to set things in motion, none of us would be here. I need that to sink in for a moment because folks think that the world was made by an accident, that, 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 out, that millions of years ago through osmosis, the, the, the universe had gas and fired it, and then all of a sudden we all were created. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Big bang, amen, big fart. That's what they say it is, gas. <laughs> Hello, somebody. But Christ is our foundation because he was at the beginning. When God spoke, he spoke not on his own as just the Father, but he spoke in tandem with the Son and the Holy Spirit. I'm going to get to that later in today's text. But Christ will always be at the beginning of every promise that God provides to us through his word. Get this, y'all. This is why Jesus spoke to us with the word, because when we recognize him at the beginning of all things, we will experience all of the possibilities that come with having him as our foundation. Go to the Gospels with me for a minute. Just remember your study of the Gospels. Every time Jesus spoke, he spoke as a fulfillment of the word. Anybody hearing me this morning? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus didn't talk out the side of his neck. No, everything he said came from the word because he is the word. He said, look, I, I, he, he didn't have to make stuff up. He quoted everything from the word to let the people that should have known the word know that he wasn't coming out of just nowhere, but he had been there all the time. And that's what God's word needs to do to us every now and then to remind us that just because it just happened don't mean that God ain't already got a solution in process. 
But the second thing that we have in Christ as the embodiment of light is fellowship. The word was with God. You can't see God the Father without understanding and recognizing God the Son. Some folks want to separate and take Jesus out of the equation, but you can't, you can't do that. Amen. Because Christ's fellowship with God is significant. It's significant because when we read the Gospels, Jesus always made it clear that he and the Father were one or are one. This was evident in his fellowship with God the Father and how he always sought to do the will of the Father in his capacity as the Son. Can y'all can y'all see that for a second? That, 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 that Jesus was with God in the beginning because there's a fellowship that was going on long before you and I start singing what a fellowship. Amen. And it's this fellowship that Jesus had with God that God wants us to have with Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? You see, I thank God that I got fellowship with God, the Father, because I accepted Jesus Christ. But I also have the God, the Holy Spirit, to help keep that connection alive. Hello, somebody. Because, you know, that's, what, that's why we struggled in the past, because we didn't have the Spirit to help us go right when we wanted to go left. We didn't have the Holy Spirit to help us do right when we wanted to do wrong. Hello, somebody. Just think about for a moment how you were before Christ, and somebody says something to you, and you get ready to do something. Amen. But after you got saved, the same people that tried to do something couldn't do nothing hello somebody because the holy spirit helped you to hello somebody it's this fellowship that reminds us of our connection to god through jesus just as jesus had fellowship with the father we too have access through jesus to this fellowship that keeps us enlightened about god's will for our lives if Jesus is with God and that fellowship that he has with God is something that we desire, we got to get that which keeps us in right relationship with God, his spirit and his word. And then thirdly, the thing that helps us to understand Jesus, the, the embodiment of light, is this thing called fulfillment. The word was God. In other words, we got to understand that you cannot separate God the Father from God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. You cannot separate God's word from God. Hello, somebody. Everything is all in tandem. Everything is all working together. And unless we allow those things to work together, we're going to find our lives not being together. But it's this fulfillment of Christ, him being the fulfillment of what God spoke through the promises through the covenant relationships in the Old Testament, through the prophecies to those that God inspired to try to get everybody back on the right track. And the proclamations we read throughout the Bible, it, it, it is the truth that Jesus came to fulfill all of these things by fulfilling the promises, fulfilling the prophecies, fulfilling the proclamations of God. And this ought to give us an assurance that he will come into our lives to fulfill that which God has promised, that which God's word has spoken into our lives, that which God's word is, is come on, somebody, screaming at us. Come on, some, sometimes God's word is trying to get our attention. Sometimes God's word is speaking so clear that we try to resist it, but then the word keep doing what it's going to do because the Bible says the word is going to go out and accomplish it what it got to do before it comes back because it's not going to return void you may not do nothing with that word today but that word gonna keep working on you has there ever been a scripture come on somebody that you heard at one point in your life and you said no nah, i ain't ready for that yet and it kept coming back am i talking to somebody today and it's something that that, that, that that eventually you begin to understand man god hasn't given up on me why hasn't God given up on you? Because God is faithful that to, to perform the work that he began in you. Therefore, if you are saved, God's not going to give up on you. That's why I love that song that says, don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. Because he's able to do what he promised. And so when we allow this assurance to come into our lives to fulfill that which God has already promised, we will see that he's already come through with fulfilling our greatest need, and that is salvation. If God saved you and God saved me, then he can do anything that we need him to do. But it's about seeing Christ in order to perceive him. It's about seeing him to perceive him fully. And in order to do this, the second point is this. We must see Christ as our beginning, not just our ending. You know, sometimes folks just see Christ as the, as, as, as the person that's going to come back on that white horse and, 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 and come to set off the judgment. 
And some folks scared. They just buried Carlton Pearson and people people struggling to wonder if he in hell right now. And the thing is, you, you, you can't refute the fact that there is a heaven and there is a hell. I'm sorry. I mean, I ain't sorry. I mean, I'm just going to say what I'm going to say. Hey, Amen. You, you cannot refute the fact that there is a beginning and an ending. To take out one part of the equation is screwing up the whole, come on, somebody, understanding of what it is we believe. It's just like saying you born and you'll never die. No, as sure as we're born, as surely we're going to what? We don't want to talk about it. Hello, somebody. But guess what? Everybody, as my grandma said, everybody got an appointment that they ain't going to miss. Come on, somebody. But what does this got to do with Jesus? Well, Jesus is our beginning and our ending. In other words, our ending with Christ gives us hope, but we cannot forget our beginning with Christ because it's the beginning that gives us hope for the ending. Come on, somebody. The fact that Jesus wasn't just somebody who just came on the scene, that Jesus is not just another prophet for another religion, that Jesus is not just some goody two shoes that lived among the people for a season and then did a or, or did an extraordinary thing that nobody else wanted to do. No, it's bigger than that. He was the beginning because verse two said he was in the beginning with God. It didn't say he was at the beginning. He was in the beginning. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? In other words, Jesus didn't come after the beginning. He was in the beginning. So what does that say about us as his people? The work of Christ spans from the creation to revelation. Sometimes the focus people have of Christ is heavily placed on the end times, the judgment and his return. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you got to you got to you got to understand the authority of Christ, the sovereignty of Christ. You got to understand that he didn't just come when Mary popped him out of the womb. Amen. No, he came down through all the generations that he came down through is because God had a plan from the beginning because Christ was there. Hmm. While these things about the end times must be at the forefront of our minds, especially as we see all the stuff going on in the world today, as we await his return, we must not forget the work Christ did in the beginning with God. That's what gives me hope, amen, that if God had a plan at the beginning to make things right, come on, somebody, that's why even when you read Romans, even God has a plan for the remnant of Israel that is yet to believe. Y'all know your word. And you got to understand that God is always about planning ahead because he know we always, hello somebody, last minute. Well, it was in the beginning that God worked out the plan to redeem us when he spoke to Adam and Eve after the fall. It was in the beginning of Israel's journey as the people of God that God promised uh, through covenant a Messiah that would be born to deliver his people. It was in the beginning that God would send a savior to initiate the reconciliation that would impact all of creation. What a mighty God we serve. The fact that when Adam and Eve fell, God had a plan. When Israel was delivered from bondage in Egypt, God had a plan. When Israel messed up, come on somebody, over and over and over, God had a had, had, had a covenant with, with, with Moses. He had Abraham had a covenant with Moses. He had a covenant with David. He said, look, this, I, I keep trying to make this covenant work for y'all. But he said, look, I got the, I, the, the Davidic one was it. Amen. The Davidic one was like, okay, this, this, I'm, try, I'm trying to get y'all to this point where you understand that I am your God. I'm the God of your fathers. I'm the God that brought you out of Egypt. I'm the God that saved you. Now I got to send my son to, hello, somebody. And what did he do? He sent his son, but he initiated that from the beginning, beginning that not only would his people, the, the Israelites, be delivered, but you and I, the other ites. Y'all know we other ites. Now, I don't know your lineage, but I'm a other ite. Hello, somebody. Oh, Lord, y'all. But he did it to save us all. And seeing Christ as our beginning and end keeps us rooted in his role as the embodiment of God's light that shines in our soul, our minds, and our hearts. And I'm going to tell you how that works. If you look at Revelation 22, 11 through 13, 
Y'all, we went to the Genesis, now we're in Revelation. It reminds us that Jesus is coming back, whether we are ready for it or not. Get this, y'all. It says, let the one who does wrong still do wrong, and the one who is filthy still be filthy. But let the one who is righteous still practice righteousness, and the one who is holy still keep himself holy. Jesus says, behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to render to every man according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Somebody ought to thank God that his word confirms what his word confirms. He don't need a confirmation in the Senate. Hello, somebody. He don't need a vote in the House of Representatives. He don't need a ballot in a primary, come on, or a general election. God's word stands on its own. Keeping Christ, y'all, at the forefront of our lives by allowing him to be our beginning and ending will keep us striving for holiness by practicing righteousness. Why, why did I read that? Because, look, y'all, it's too much to deal with in life where we get distracted by stuff that we can't control. Trump going to be Trump. People need to stop putting Trump in heaven. The only person that can save Trump is Jesus. Hello, somebody. Folks out here in the world doing all this crazy stuff, wars and, and, and killing folks, innocent people. Come on, somebody. You need to pray for the folks that are trying to get out of danger. Amen. Y'all hearing what I'm saying this morning? Because the Bible says if folks ain't going to get right, there's going to come a day that they wish they would have gotten right. But we can't go wrong by stop trying to be right to deal with folks who are wrong. Am I helping somebody today? Sometimes you put all your energy into getting into fights and arguments and quarrels with folks who ain't going to change their mind, folks who are stuck and stubborn in their ways, and you need to focus on your salvation. You need to focus on your walk with God. You need to focus on your holiness with God. You need to focus on practicing your righteousness with, oh, come on, somebody. I'm not saying you don't pray for folks that despitefully use you. Come on, somebody, but you pray for them. You ain't got to talk to them. Talk to God. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. Remembering that Christ was with God in the beginning should make us desire to do both because it means that God's plan for us was always to succeed through Christ. How do you succeed in Christ? How do you succeed in life? Strive after Christ. Strive for that holiness. If you want to receive that reward after life, let Christ be your righteousness. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying this morning? I want to succeed in Christ by striving for holiness. Ain't none of us perfect. All of us got stuff that we need God to do to clean up in our lives. But it's something about striving for holiness because God said, be ye holy for I am holy. It's something about the reward of trying to live your life in the righteousness of God instead of the righteousness of this world that ought to make you want Christ to be in your life. You see, this is the enlightenment Christ desires for us to have as his disciples. And this is possible when we get to the application when a person allows him to be the light of their life. I, I know we love Stevie and we love playing, you are the sunshine of my life. Okay, all right, yeah. That's why I always, whatever, you always be around, okay. <laughs> you are the apple of, uh, yes, okay. When's the last time? <laughs> but when's the last time you told Jesus <laughs> that he's the S-O-N shine of your life? Hello, somebody. Y'all pray for me. I had a long day yesterday. <laughs> But it's something about when Christ is your life. It's something about when you let Christ in and, 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 and not just be, you know, we always say, give honor to Christ who is the head of my life. That's always a demarker. You need to step back for a moment and watch them in the parking lot. Watch them at the grocery store. Because <laughs> most of the people that say that, I see them cussing and doing other stuff. I'm like, okay, is he really the head of your life? Or the tail? But anyway, um, life and the light about Christ being those things is in this first application. Our believing should be connected to our being in Christ. Our believing should be connected to our being in Christ. Everything that we are in Christ is based on what we believe about Christ. 
You cannot be in Christ unless you believe in Christ. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Because if you're in Christ, the Bible says you are a new creature. Old things have passed away. New things are starting. Anybody know what I'm talking about? See, when you're in Christ and you believe that you're in Christ, all the old stuff is old. Amen. It's, it's just like the stuff you pack away and then you don't discover until you move. Hey, I, I haven't seen this in a long time. Hello, somebody. Should have thrown it away probably. I'm guilty of that. But by the time you find it, it's useless. And that's how it ought to be when our old ways, amen, sometimes we kind of tuck them away. But then when we find them, we have no use for them because they're obsolete. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And to understand how this works, this believing in, in being in Christ, look at verse 3. It says, all things came into being through him. And apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. This is one of the scriptures that I always love to go to when folks want to discredit God for being who God is. This is why I tell folks all the time, stop, 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 stop discrediting what God does. If God created you, you're not an accident. If God brought you into this world, you're not a freak of nature. If God brought it, come on, somebody. Everything that God allows us to have in his world was intended for good, but it's something about sin that messes it all up. Adam and Eve had it good. Lord, if I didn't have to work. Hello, somebody. You wouldn't even need, you know, retirement for my generation is a, is, is a, is a, is a cautionary tale. Because I've been paying Social Security since I was a teenager. And I said, Lord, if I get $5 from it, I'll be happy. I'm not saying, y'all, 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 I'm, I'm going I'm to I'm pay my taxes. So y'all, yeah, y'all Social Security. Well, hello, somebody. But can you imagine if Adam and Eve never failed, you could just go to the garden and get your vegetables. You ain't got to go hunting for no food at the grocery store. Yeah, you didn't understand what I just said. <laughs> Y'all be going hunting because you look at right, that meat don't look good. Uh, hold on. I want a fresh cut. Don't give me that with your head out. Don't. I see you relabeling that tag. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Can you imagine we would have had a work? We wouldn't have we wouldn't have had a 40 day week, 40 hour, 40, whatever, 40 hours. Y'all pray. What, what am I trying to? Is it 40 hours a week? I don't know. I work more than 40 hours. Come on, somebody. But but it's something about. Whatever it is that God brings into being, being intended for good. And, and y'all, we got to get back to that good. Hello, somebody. God, God, God always does stuff to help us live a good life, but sin messes it up. But that's a sermon for another day, when sin messed it up. Amen. But, th but the point of this point in verse 3 is that everything that we are and hope to be is because of Christ. It is our belief in Christ that impacts and directs our being in Christ. Look, do you know that just believing in Christ can impact your life positively? Believing in Christ can direct your paths into green pastures by still water. Not, come on somebody, not a famine land by no water. You ain't living in a drought when you're with Jesus. But he is the one who makes all things happen for those who believe in him. This is, a, this is a few verses, but Colossians 1, 15 to 20 breaks it down like this. It says, he is the image of the invisible God. I love the word because it confirms it. It confirms it. If you read John 1 and read Colossians 1, you have a praise party. He is the image of the invisible God. Is it making sense, y'all? He is God <laughs> because he came to be the image of God who is a spirit. But he is the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth. That's telling you he was there in the beginning, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Don't let the devil get you twisted. Hello, somebody. Jesus is still on the throne. Jesus is still, I'm just giving commentary because the word is giving me excited. Jesus is still king of kings and lord of lords. 
How do I know this? Because verse 17 says, he is before all things, and in all things, and in him all things hold together. Verse 18, he is also head of the body, the church, he, and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place in everything, which means that if Jesus is a winner, guess who you going to be? A winner too. <laughs> for it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in him and through him to reconcile all things to himself having made peace through the blood of his cross through him I say whether things on earth or things in heaven I hope you heard the two words that resonated in this passage that resonated in verse 3 it's the first two words all things somebody say all things come on y'all in Christ <laughs> We have one who created all things because by him, through him, and for him, everything was created. Come on, somebody. Even technology and how warped people mess it up to be. Technology is a good thing when it's done for good reasons. Hello, somebody. You got to think about it. It's amazing that we know more now than folks knew a long time ago. We have advances now than people had a long time ago. Who do you think continues to allow us to understand and to discover things is the one who created all things. See, folks don't understand that science Science is not always a bad thing when you realize that science ain't about you trying to disprove God. It's about you trying to discover who God is. I love it when I read scientific stuff because I said, y'all, y'all got y'all little hypothesis. Because you don't understand God because the light came and you don't comprehend that all of the intricacies that are in our DNA God did that. All of the things that happened without us inter intervening, matter of fact, God even tried to fix what we mess up. All the species that existed that, that we were too, our, our people that came before us, not our ancestors, but the folks that came before us that was too silly to understand, you can't kill all the bison. You can't take out all the elephants. You can't, Lord have mercy, if we get rid of the bees, we all gonna be, we gonna be something. Hello, somebody. I know my mama don't like bees, but we need bees, mama. Hello, somebody. But everything, are y'all hearing me? Everything was created because there was a purpose that God had for it to be created. And it was created by Christ, through Christ, and for Christ. Because the, the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. God gave Jesus the name that is above all names uh, so that creatures up in heaven, on earth, and even the stuff under the earth got to bow down at the name of Jesus. In Christ, we have one who is before all things. I love this one, y'all. Nothing supersedes the one who is supernatural. Come on, somebody. I know folks can do some fantastic things in this world we live in, but ain't nobody come close to Jesus. I watched the Michigan game, game yesterday, but that didn't get me as excited as Jesus. Yeah, J.J. did his thing, but let me tell you, J-E-S-U-S -S always do his thing. Hello, somebody. And that, come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. Sometimes folks think, oh, that's so wonderful. Somebody got uh, scored more, whatever. No, let me tell you the one who scored on the cross and who died for your sins and my sins. <laughs> I know I shouldn't mess with sports, but y'all know what I'm saying. In Christ, we have the one who holds all things together. This is my favorite one. It's all out of Colossians 1, y'all. We have one who holds all things together. He is the head that holds us together as the body. You know, the church would be more messed up than what it is if there weren't enough churches that had Jesus as the head. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Church splitting. Denominations, not the church. Denominations. Get that. Denominations are splitting. Now, you're already split, and you're going to split again. Now, why they split? And that's the sermon for another day. Scandal is wrecking certain denominations. Come on, somebody. We must strive because we live in a world of sin. Every now and then is because we live in a world of sin. In other words, somebody's doing something to make your life and my life 
not so great. But I thank God that despite those people, we got a God who's always working in our life to bring the greater things into our life. Come on, somebody know what I'm talking about. The fact that you and I got to pay taxes, and some folks don't pay any taxes, that got more money than us. Hello, somebody. Oh, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. <laughs> there are certain resources that some people have easy access to, and we got to work hard to get to them. And when we get them, folks think that we, ain't, we, ain't, we don't deserve them. Hello, somebody. Well, Jesus came to disrupt this struggle so we can have the potential to thrive like God intended for us in the beginning. And who better to bring this life of thriving than Jesus, the one who was in the beginning? He is still shining today, guiding those who are seeking this life in God to the path and plan of salvation. And so I want to take you to John chapter 10, verse 9 and 11. Jesus said, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came, Jesus says, that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And so when you read verse 10 and he says, I came that they may have life. And then you go back to what he says in verse 4, in him was life and the life was the light of men. Jesus is trying to say something to us that only one who has given their life to Christ can experience this abundancy in life. It's this life that allows us to walk in the light as we walk with the light. I don't know about you. I'm glad every day when I open God's word, I can walk in the light as the light walks with me. <laughs> Did y'all hear what I just said? <laughs> to be able to walk in the light is to allow God's word to do something in your life. <laughs> and because Jesus is the word and he was in the beginning, come on, somebody, he was with God and he was the word. It reminds me that if I'm walking in the light with the word of God, then that means I'm walking with the light who is Jesus Christ. And it's this life that allows allows the sun to shine in our lives because there are people who need to encounter the light so they can have an experience with the light. This is why I'm preaching this sermon for the this series for the month because guess what y'all there are folks who have yet to encounter the light because they ain't been around those who are shining their light for Jesus. Hello somebody and the thing is it occurs when we let the light that shines in us shine as we go out into the world and this is necessary because we live in a world that is full of darkness. I only have to go back to the first part of today's text that even though the light came actually verse 5 even though the light came and the light shines in darkness, the darkness cannot comprehend it. And so it is necessary that we live in this world of darkness because Jesus reminds us in Matthew 5, 14 through 16, he says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. And so what did he say in verse 16? Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven. You see, if we want folks to experience the life, they got to have an encounter with the light. And the only way they're going to have an encounter with the light is if we let our light shine for Jesus. Uh, if we let Jesus, the light, shine in us. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm going to bring this thing, thing to an end. But let me tell you, everybody needs to know the same. Everybody needs to know the one who died for them. Everybody needs to know the story of how he died on a Friday and stayed dead on a Saturday. But early Sunday morning, he got up. And guess what? He didn't get up in the dark. He got up in the light because he was the light of the world. Come on, somebody. And I'm so glad that he's shining in my soul, that he's shining in your soul. And if we're going to reach the lost, we must be willing to let their encounter with us lead to an experience with the one who is the light of our life. And so I want to leave in connection, walking in the light through the word, which is Psalm 119, 105. It says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Isn't it good for us to have Jesus and the word of God in our lives? Because we need both to walk in the light. 
I don't know about you, I'm so glad that when I open the word of God, it brightens up my day. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? When I have the word of God in the morning, it brightens up my day. When, it have, when I have the word of God in the noonday, it keeps me thinking about the goodness of God, and it brightens up my day even more. And even when night comes, I open up the word. Come on, somebody, because I need to know that God is still shining. And you know how I know God is still shining? Because just like the moon reflects the sun. My life is reflecting Christ. I want Christ to walk with me. I want Christ to talk with me. I want Christ to move in me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Does anybody want Christ to walk with them? Does anybody want Christ to talk with them? It's something about having Christ in one's life that you can go anywhere. You can do anything and know that God is still fighting your battles, that God is still making a way. I'm trying to let you know that you got the light working in your life. It's something about the light of the world, that when he shines in your soul, mercy comes when you need it the most. When he shines in your soul, you have a day of all days where you can give thanksgiving because God is a good God. And I thank God ha, that every day I wake up, ha, I'm walking in the light. Ha. Come on, somebody. Ha. Do you want to walk in the light? Ha. I hear him just say it. We'll walk in the light. Ha. Beautiful light. Ha. We want to come where the dew drops ha, of mercy shine bright. Ha. How many of you want God to shine all around you? Ha. Day and by night. Ha. I love Jesus because he is the light of the world. Ha. And then another songwriter says, Jesus, he is the light of the world. He's ever shining in my soul. Is it shining in your soul this morning? You ought to thank God that he is the way, the truth, and the light. I thank God that I get to the Father through the Son because Jesus said, if you want to get to the Father, you got to come through me. And I thank God huh, that I know Jesus for myself. Huh? But before I leave this place, huh, do you know Jesus? Huh? Do you know the light? Huh? Do you have the light working? Huh? Because if the light is working, huh, you ought to turn on the lights. Huh? Stop turning off the light huh? and let the light shine huh? in your soul. Huh? Ain't he all right? Huh? The mic may be out, huh? but I thank God huh? that I got a reason to praise him this morning huh? because he is the light of the world. Huh? You ought to come on down where the dew drops, come on somebody, of mercy are shining bright. I need mercy in the morning. I need mercy in the noonday. Look, I'm glad mercies are new every morning, but I don't just need them in the morning. I don't know about you. I need mercy all during the day. I need grace to keep me in the way. There's something about Jesus that when you call on him, everything begins to be all right. And you want to know why? Because when Jesus come in, he'll shine a light on your situation. He'll shine a light on your problems. He'll shine a light on your situation. But he ain't doing it to keep you there. But he's showing you that if you trust in him, he will make everything all right. You ought to thank God this morning huh, that he can make it all right. Huh? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Huh? Won't he make it all right? Huh? Won't he do it? Huh? Won't he turn it around? Huh? Won't he make a way? Huh? I know the Lord will make a way huh? somehow because huh? I got Jesus huh? for my journey. Huh? And if I hold on, if you hold on, if you hold on, he will come through. He's a good God. And I don't know about you. I want to walk in the light. How many of you want to walk in the light this morning? One might say that the light and the mics come back on. Amen. We'll walk in the light. Beautiful light, 
Come where the dew drops of mercy. Oh, shine on by day. Oh, y'all sound good. Come on, Jesus. The light of the world. Come on, one more time. We'll walk in the light. We'll walk in the beautiful light. How do you want Jesus to shine all around? Shine all around by faith. Now shine all around. Shine all around us by day and by night. Oh, Jesus. One more time. And I won't mess it up this time. Come on, y'all. Yes, we will walk in the Come on, the beautiful light. Come where the dew drops. Come where the dew drops of mercy. Arm shining bright. Say, come shine all around us by day and by night. Oh, Jesus, the light of the world. How many believe he's the light of the world? Said Jesus. Yes, he is. Jesus, the light. Jesus of the world. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, because we know that you're ever shining in our souls. And Father, we thank you, Lord, because we know that without you, we would not have the abundancy that comes with everything that you offer us as the light of our life. And there's something about you, Lord, that allows us to know that everything will be all right. And as we continue to walk by faith and not by sight, we do so because it is our faith in you that lights our hope. Even in a season like this, Lord, where we have to deal with situations and trials and tribulations, God, we don't do or go through those things by ourselves. We thank you, Lord, for salvation. And we always offer the invitation every Sunday, Lord, if someone needs to come to Christ, that they would find their way to Christ. Because he is still seeking those that are seeking him. And Father, I pray, Lord, that as we go forth into this week, Lord, that you would Continue to keep us grounded and rooted in your word, knowing that Jesus is that word that was with you, Lord, as our Father in heaven. At the beginning of times, before the foundations of the earth were even formed, Christ was there as a part of the plan for us to be connected to you. And so I thank you, God, that despite all the things that sin tries to keep us from, we have a Savior who keeps us connected to you. And so, Lord, there's anybody that's without Christ, Lord, I always pray that they will come to know him for themselves. For, Lord, there is a beginning with Christ, but there is also an ending that's coming. And we want to be ready, Lord, to meet you, prepared to see you face to face. And so, God, I pray, Lord, that it would be so. And for those of us that know you, Lord, help us to allow your light to shining, shine in us so it's not hidden, but it's shining brightly. And it's not shining as if we're perfect, but it's shining to show that we're being perfected by the one who is perfect. And God, I pray, Lord, that you continue to lead and guide us. Keep us, Lord, on the path that you have set before us with your word. We pray this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.
Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can come to this table once again to give thanks for the sacrifice that was made on the cross. We pray that as we take these elements that we would take them in a worthy manner, Lord, and that the forgiveness that we receive from you, Lord, that we have uh, passed it forward, Lord, that we have allowed ourselves to forgive others as we also have received forgiveness for ourselves. We pray that we would always remember the sacrifice and to rejoice in what it means for us personally and collectively. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Let us take the bread that has been provided for us broken on the cross. And now let us take the juice, the wine, which represents the bread shed for the remission of our sins. Amen. Amen. Just a few shout outs and we're ready to go. Uh, we're happy to see the uh, Dixons are back. Amen. Amen. Safe from their travels. Amen. And I asked Deke, I said, I said, y'all enjoy the warm weather? He said, it was in the 60s. I said, that's warmer than it was here. Amen. I'll trade that, dr the dry air and the warmer air than cold and snow. Nice. Um, but we thank God for bringing them back safely in their travels. And uh, we pray for there will be some others that will be traveling. And we just pray God's traveling grace and mercy during this season. Amen. Amen. We want to be in prayer for um, Sister Butler's family, the Patterson family, uh, and the passing of her brother in Florida, um, Don. Sister Butler, Don, right? Sister Butler. It was your brother, Don, yes. So so we want to um, be in prayer uh, for the Butler and Patterson family. Amen? Amen. And then we want to continue to keep Sister uh, Merchant uh, in our prayers. Uh, she had to go in for her procedures, um, but Brother Ralph has been keeping me updated, and so I'm going to um, hopefully make contact with the family this week, but just keep her lifted up, amen. Um, she is still in the hospital, but uh, we're just praying all things work together for her, amen, when it comes to her health. And then, uh, finally, um, we do have our service project uh, information, and so we're doing uh, a joint project and starting um, this weekend all the way to the weekend of the third. Sunday. Oh, Barry Doe. Amen. All things work together. <laughs> Y'all, come on. I knew it was going to come back on eventually. I just said, Lord, let, let it be. And the Lord gave me utterance to, to, to project. Amen. But now I don't have to work so hard. Uh, so uh, this is a sheet <laughs> that you can look at. Uh, we're doing um, kits. And so this will be uh, in partnership with the Michigan Veterans Homes Association. So this is those that, the agency that helps uh, assist veterans. And we want to be able to be a blessing, amen. Uh, believe it or not, I, our, our students did a, a Veterans Day observance performance at the VA hospital. My first time actually in that hospital and drive by all the time. And um, it was clear that there were some issues in terms of fair treatment of our veterans, amen. And you would think after, you know, putting your life on the line for a country that the country will look out for you. Um, but that is still a struggle. And so we want to make sure that for those that are without or those that are experiencing difficulties after giving service to this country that they are thought of. Amen. And well taken care of. So these items that you see on the list uh, will be uh, very helpful and we will be uh, collecting them, putting them in kits and then delivering it at some point before uh, the 25th, amen? So if you can donate, if you don't have the, if you don't have the time to go out and purchase items, you can uh, just put it on your envelope that you wanna give a donation to go towards uh, anything that we will go pick up to supplement what you all bring in, amen? Amen, but we wanna be a blessing, so let us, let us do this as one of our joint service projects for this uh, season, amen? Amen, we're happy to see everybody, and. I pray that everybody's blessed, and we'll see you. Oh, pray for uh, Hartford. Many of you probably have heard already that uh, Dr. Adams, the father, uh, passed away. Um, and so he uh, came, and it, it's always interesting when I worked at, when I served at Spring Hill, there were a few occasions when we had funerals, and he was just the most, somebody of his stature to be so humble. Like, he literally came in, through the side, you remember that side door in the parking lot? And he just kind of came in, and I was like, Dr. Adams. And he was like, oh no, bless you, but he was like, I'm just coming to see the family. Came, did what he did, left, didn't make a big to-do about it. 
Um, and it always stuck with me because this man who was an internationally renowned preacher uh, just had that humility and spirit um, in dealing with people. And so we want to pray for that congregation. We have uh, uh, former uh, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ from Spring Hill that attend Hartford now. And then we have people in our congregation that are connected to people that go to Hartford. So we want to just pray for that church family. Amen. Because it's a tough thing when you lose your pastor. Um, even though he had retired, we know the work that he did for the church and the city. And so we want to just keep them lifted up. Amen. Amen. All right. Our biblical truth for today. Is it good? Oh, there it is. All right. Let's read it. Perceiving the light is about receiving the one who is light into one's life. Christ is the light that shines in the soul's of those who accept him as their savior, redeemer, and deliverer. All right, let's sing our benediction song. Blessed be the tie, blessed be the tie, blessed be the tie that binds our hearts. Blessed be the tie, blessed be the tie, blessed be the tie that binds our hearts. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts. Amen. Be blessed. Tell somebody you love them before you leave and have a blessed week. Amen. Amen.